You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Well, she has been publicly feuding with Mr. Trump for years now, but this time Rosie O'Donnell might have taken it too far. The comedian tweeting this, I fully support imposing martial law, delaying the inauguration until Trump is cleared of all charges. Rosie also called the president-elect mentally ill and a liar. The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. This is a just placed order for more than 300,000 bullets just the latest in a series of contracts that could add up to more than a billion and a half rounds of ammo over the next five years. Critics say that's enough bullets to supply the equivalent of the Iraq war for 24 years. A busy night tonight in the skies over the valley. Right now, the military is in the middle of a big training exercise over Phoenix. For the second night in a row, people are calling the 3TV newsroom, wondering what's happening. And tonight, we have some answers. Karen Brown live in Phoenix now with a look at what's going on out there tonight. Karen? Yeah, you know, Carrie, we've had so many phone calls into the station and the tweets that are coming in. People wondering why these blacked out helicopters have been flying around the valley. And as you take a look at some of the buildings downtown, what witnesses here are saying is that they were actually flying amongst the buildings. And now we know why. In fact, Phoenix PD confirming for us that the Department of Defense is conducting training exercises uh, trying to get military personnel certified in urban operations so that when they go overseas they are prepared here's what one witness saw i mean they were very close to the buildings they were at different levels they were at top of it they would come down to the bottom part of it you know our middle way i guess you'd say and then they would go back up and they would take off and just fly then they would stop and go again wow um and what did the helicopters look like it was hard to say because it was dark and it, they were blacked out. I mean, very few lights on them. All right, and another live look here. In fact, we can tell you that uh, these exercises will be going on here in Phoenix, as well as Tempe, Mesa, and Scottsdale. They will end on the 22nd. This is a nationwide effort, so it's not just Phoenix. Maybe you heard it, maybe you saw it, I did. A lot of you on Facebook and Twitter said you did too. Lights and sounds booming through the darkness of night in parts of South Florida. The, no, the noise that is leaving many of us sleepless in the city. Well, tonight we're showing you exactly what it was and what was going on. The night team's Mike Mars is live in Coconut Grove with the story. Mike? Lynn, so the U.S. Department of Defense says it gave some notice to people in this area near Miami City Hall. A lot of those people include tourists that were down here visiting. So just imagine you sort of come down to South Florida, want to relax, nestle into your bed, and just after you click off 7 News at 11, this happens. It's like a scene out of an overseas military mission, but this is Coconut Grove. We saw like flashes and shooting and they like the Black Hawk had like a, a Gatling gun in the front and you could hear it open up and fire off. And For Art Tomzak, the three day U.S. military training exercise with Miami police added entertainment to his trip from Buffalo, New York. We got a thing in, in our room that said uh, that they were going to have maneuvers, but I figured it would be like the next day or something like that, but not in the middle of the night. But witnesses say the training soared in the skies over Coconut Grove overnight. All of a sudden I hear this zoom, zoom, and I go, oh, airplanes, I wonder how close we are to airport. The simulation so real, unknowing witnesses blew up social media, like Carlos, who tweeted, what's up with all the planes and the big black helicopter flying over Miami? Feels like a bonabon. He's referring to the site of the deadly raid on Osama bin Laden in Pakistan last year. Some people even called 911. A lot of people have called in a panic. It's no need to panic. Similar training lit up the skies over Brickell last year. This time, it happened near Miami City Hall. It's a military mission in North St. Louis. Heavily armored vehicles are rolling into town, and while they come in peace, there are all kinds of rumors about why they are here. News Channel 5's Casey Nolan is live somewhere in St. Charles County, where he got an up-close look at the military vehicles, Casey. 
Yeah, Mike, in order to get that up-close look, we've agreed not to say exactly where in St. Charles County we are tonight and where these vehicles will be parked overnight. The Army doesn't want that information to be made public for security reasons, but we can tell you why they are here. Now, this may not be such a huge deal that these rigs are in town, if not for the speculation that was coming via the Internet today. St. Louis police first put out the word that people may see these armored security vehicles in their neighborhood, especially near the Army Reserve Armory in North St. Louis on Goodfellow. But that was about all the information they released. On the KSDK Facebook page, in just a few hours, we had more than 100 people weighing in on what was going on, with comments ranging from people saying they would stop and salute if they saw the vehicles, to others worried this was the beginning of martial law. Well, it turns out this is a group of military police in from Fort Meade, Maryland, and they are here to train members of the 354th MP company here in St. Louis on how to drive these rigs, a military's driver's ed of sorts, if you will, on the highways and on city streets. They are not loaded, they are not armed in any way, but the Army says that does not mean they aren't dangerous. That vehicle is over 32,000 pounds. If they see that vehicle, it is harmless, but they need to know to stay away from it. We don't mind you all looking at it, but please stay away. Uh, every day while we're out riding around, we get hundreds of people taking pictures and filming us, and a lot of people even swerving in our lane. In fact, they were on Interstate 44 today coming in from Fort Leonard Wood. They say they had one man trying to drive and take pictures at the same time. They had a kind of a, a last minute unintended uh, class in evasive maneuvers to avoid a wreck. So their warning, be careful around what is an unusual site in St. Louis. What we saw tonight is something you normally do not see over the skies of Los Angeles. We can take you live outside, give you an idea where all this was going on over downtown Los Angeles and in the area surrounding it. Special military operation forces in conjunction with the LAPD conducting some military maneuvers that had many people wondering what is going on. Dive, 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 dive. Military maneuvers by special operation forces in full swing over the skies of Los Angeles. Our cameras were there when a Black Hawk helicopter and four OH-6s, or Little Birds, flew over the city. Take a look. This is the U.S. Bank building where they hovered for a while before flying to their next target. One o'clock, one o'clock, very low. At one point, they made what appeared to be a drop-off at a park. Within seconds of landing, the helicopter was back in the air. Oh, this is full push. Then, while over the Staples Center, while the Lakers played inside, you can see someone on board sitting with his legs hanging off the side of the chopper. While the training is hush-hush, the LAPD, which is assisting the military, says this is routine training with the focus on urban environments. The staging area tonight, Dodger Stadium. Chief Warrant Officer David Duran was a U.S. Army aviator for 12 years. He now flies Black Hawk helicopters for the National Guard in California. He says what we're seeing tonight could be a dry run for a future mission. They do a lot of mock-up training, uh, but it's always best to, to get um, the closest uh, terrain layout to what the objective is, wherever it could be, again, worldwide. Duran says the military picks environments based on what they might be facing in the near future. If it's a mountainous terrain, then they go to the mountains. If it's a desert terrain, they use the desert. If they're in coastal terrain, they use the coast. If it's an urban terrain, you know, uh, whatever, whatever is needed. When carrying out a mission, time on target is the focus. What that means is that every step of the mission must be conducted exactly as it's planned out. When lives are at stake, every second counts. These guys are really the best that there are in the world. And back out live over downtown Los Angeles. The operation continues at this hour, but we are keeping a safe distance as requested to not interfere with that. Now, we are going to see this maneuver continue for at least uh, one more night. Uh, we are told uh, that will definitely be happening, and many people wondering about the safety of this going on over an urban area. You saw some amazing maneuvers there, and we want to remind you these are highly trained professionals that are consistently training um, in what they do. Also, what we saw here tonight uh, in downtown Los Angeles has been seen in Miami and in Boston, so this sort of uh, training goes on all over the U.S. This is a black helicopter coming in, these Black Hawk helicopters. No one will be staying in Brasses County. They'll be coming in, doing the hit and extract. Uh, uh, time on in, doing the hit and extract. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes of exposure, then that's it. Then they're gone. 
Can we recommend some places to you to hit? <laughs> uh -huh. You know, every county that we have briefed has, uh, have, has done that for us also. Now, what we're looking at there, we just saw somebody on the ground, soldiers surrounding him. You're going to see that person getting uh, drug off or somebody else uh, being drug off in just a moment. More helicopters landing and taking off. This is a very dangerous thing to be operating helicopters at this level in a major city. Uh, I don't know if you can get, I don't think you can get FAA permission to do that normally. Now this, what we're looking at on the uh, video right now, is a line of people being marched across a civilian American street company by to the military. To put unconventional warfare into a perspective, you, you see it a couple different places up there, unconventional warfare, and I'll explain that from a historical perspective. Again, this is a so, presentation uh, in Brazos County of Jade Helm that you're listening to. Troops on troops, tanks on tanks, uniform enemy against uniform en enemy is the way conventional warfare is, is generally defined. Unconventional warfare, from a historical perspective, if you think of World War II, Germany came in and they took over France. The French did not want them there. They formed the French underground. The French underground conducted activities such as subversion and sabotage. They would hit logistics lines to... Yeah, so think uh, about to, to dem Nazi occupation of France, okay? We're playing the part of the Nazis. That's what the American government is doing right now. Go ahead, keep playing that. Moralize the, the um, Germans. So what a lot of folks don't know is there were American advisors with the French underground throughout World War II assisting them in planning and conducting those types of activities. Now, if you're watching this Since video right now, you see civilians being loaded into United white States vans. Army Special Forces has had the charter to conduct unconventional warfare throughout and there they go, the driving them off in the white vans to the internment The last centers. 15 years, we have been in Afghanistan and Iraq. So I got up this morning at about 4 in the morning, and I went to Infowars.com, and I was searching through different articles, and I saw a Zero Hedge story. And then I link through on the Zero Hedge article, and I was on The Intercept, I was at Army.mil, and I was reading public documents and even promo videos for the Army and the Pentagon, it was a mix of those different agencies, saying, we're going to take over America and run every town and every city in the next decade or so because the country's so destabilized, and we're going to master the human domain and control every facet of human activity. Our current and past strategies can no longer hold. We are facing environments that the masters of war never foresaw. We are facing a threat that requires us to redefine doctrine and the force in radically new and different ways. The future army will confront a highly sophisticated urban-centric threat that will require that urban operations become the core requirement for the future land force. The threat is clear. Our direction remains to be defined. The future is urban. I knew that in years past when we exposed similar documents to this, they weren't as naked or brazen, but they were similar. They'd go like 80% where these went uh, that were just released, that they would always spin it and say, Alex hates the military, or Alex says the military is coming to take your town over next month and, you know, going to rape your daughter and take your guns. Never said any of that. It was normally the military that was actually blowing the whistle and exposing all of this. So I've learned that when they come out with this, the media is promoting it, it's a good thing, but then if we critique it and say, hey, we're not supposed to have the military on the streets of America unless there's an emergency, then they spin it and say, you know, that we're saying there's an imminent invasion. We can now, and we will remain in the future, retain the capability to rapidly de deploy and, and we will destroy any enemy, anywhere, anytime. Additionally, the battlefield will be highly complex, almost certainly, in dense urban areas and against an elusive, ambiguous enemy that combines terrorism and guerrilla warfare alongside conventional capabilities mixed with large civilian populations. You just have to understand, the globalists control the military. The military is not bad on average. They're the most active, involved people in many cases. But the globalists are engineering the societal fall while they're again preparing the takeover that comes from the collapse they're orchestrating. When we covered Jade Helm, it said a trained mission, uh, a preparation operation to invade Texas and different places like Utah and even conservative counties of California. Here's Zero Hedge. Coming soon to a city near you, the U.S. military plan to take over America. You can go read the big 12-page report with all the links to the government. 
this is almost all these links are to army.mil and the pentagon and the state department this is all right there so everything we told you about jade helm three years ago now documented and happening we said it was preparation to condition you for this takeover for the collapse they're engineering that they then want the military to come in and clean up knowing that our military is who we love and that they were our friends and family so we'll just accept it but after the military leaves the bureaucratic controllers come in now here's one from the intercept and they talk about a dystopia the collapse of the city's martial law takeover of society master of the human domain the domestic plan behind jade helm this is May of two years ago, 2015, how it was all just a big drill to condition the military and the public to integrate with all the smart technology for a total shutdown and takeover of civilization if it's needed. There's that report. Now you read the new reports, these early reports didn't admit all of it, but they admitted much of it. Now they just admit the whole thing. And that's because this was all waiting there in the last two years with Obama getting ready for Hillary to come in and this whole engineered collapse and Chelsea was going to run this big world government health body that forced inoculations on people that came out in Heat Street today. God almighty, I did a report on it last week, I didn't know it was that bad. A uh, big report I did three and a half years ago, Don Salazar, Alex Jones, government promises to stop lying because of Drudge Report, and they come out and they say in an hour-long press conference with the then Deputy Secretary of the Army, or no, Secretary of Defense, they say, listen, we know you, we've been lying to you, you don't believe us anymore. So we're going to send the CIA and military into every town and city, and we're going to take over to make sure we tell the truth now. And we cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. <laughs> now that was Obama pushing all that, so when they tell you we're going to not take over, it's, it's the opposite, but they said it. Go watch the hour-long press conference and see my analysis from three and a half years ago. I said it's a total takeover every city, every county with covert operations because they know the American people have woken up and the big foreign banks don't want that to happen. Now, instead of that happening, the U.S. military and the Pentagon and the patriots that are in it, just like Hitler had Operation Valkyrie for martial law in case people resisted him, and a continuity of government system, they tried to use that to take Hitler out. Well, because they tried to put in a martial law COG system to totally take over the United States, the intelligence agencies were all given the intel that it was a martial law plan. They had the proof they needed that it was sedition, but they could also use these communication grids and systems into all the local media to actually go in and turn the public, who was already partially awake, completely against the New World Order globalist plan. And there's been an intelligence agency counter coup through a popular vote and the American people and the Electoral College to defeat the globalists because they were so arrogant. It's not the intelligence agencies are perfect, but a weirdo pedophile pervert like Bill Clinton and Hillary and, you know, walking around in Chinese communist outfits. She's not just their agent, but wears their uniforms saying that they were going to dominate America and take the guns and go after veterans. And it was just like, we're really going to be dominated by these people. A new article, White House fears sabotage by intelligence industrial complex. All this stuff you see isn't feared sabotage. It's current sabotage. Now, here's a file from two years ago on Jade Helm. And yeah, we're vindicated. Everything we told you about Jade Helm has now been admitted. And Obama had it all down to the plan. Coming soon to a city near you, the U.S. military plan to take over America. You should add for the globalists. There's the original Jade Helm document posted at Army.mil, linked at Infowars.com, where they admit the plan to train for invading Texas and taking our guns. But it was multifaceted. It wasn't going to happen in 2015. It was just to get the public all riled up so they could say, there's no military takeover imminent, so we would just accept the incremental. As they try to implode the economy and the social justice warriors, the Black Lives Matter. Covert warfare coming to Texas sparked some fears of federal takeover. And they went on in all the major papers to say we said it was an imminent takeover. Well, we never said that. Jade Helm, troops to operate undetected amongst civilian population. Again, that's just all part of training them to be basically CIA assassins. Video, Marines practice subduing citizens inside internment camp. And they say, Are you, you're a veteran, you're a gun owner, you're a constitutionalist, we're going to arrest you. So you see the training right there. But instead of just saying, hey, they shouldn't be doing that training, they say... 
Oh, it's imminent takeover to discredit us. Document Jade Helm, commander, plans to operationalize the Kona base right here in the United States, continental United States. See? Establishment press discredits itself with Jade Helm deceit. Article on that. Louis Garment gets why some Texans are worried about military takeover, National Journal. And he goes into Obama was training for martial law, buying billions of bullets, had the military training for it. A lot of the military actually got what it was. It was kind of a dry run to see if they could get away with it. And now Obama has built a bunker two miles from Trump and says he's preparing a military takeover. It's in the news. And Michael Moore says kill Trump, overthrow him today, Infowars.com. Jade Helm, the human domain, the domestic plan behind Jade Helm. And again, they get into all this in their own PowerPoints that it is a plan to take over America. Chuck Norris came out and said, Jade Helm 15, crime stoppers at risk. And he exposed the fact that serious stuff was going on. And they're so scared of Chuck Norris because of his name and who he is with the military. They did drills on his ranch without asking him. And I, this came from his son, hoping he would do something. Oh, they, they fear Chuck Norris even more than me and General Boykin. The, you know, there's key names they really fear with the military. Abbott defends Jade Helm 15 decision, saying, yeah, you, the manual says martial law training, we're going to monitor it. Army manual outlines plan to kill rioters, demonstrators in America. Well, you, they may have to if the cities are burning, but again, the globalists and Soros are pushing it, so they have an excuse to set the president. Now, this is what you really want to read. FM 3-39.40, internment resettlement operations, 2010. This got leaked a year after it got leaked to us by patriots. Obama admitted it was real and it was released. Talks about processing your social security numbers, how to put you in a forced labor camp. Remember, the weatherman openly said that back in the 70s in federal court how to process you and your family. And then, of course, there's Freedom From War, the United States program for general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world, how the United Nations takes our guns, who runs our refugee program, who runs the Unidir program, who runs the Safe City and Strong Cities initiatives, the UN. And it goes on to say, State Department Publication 7277, go read it, see scans of the manual online. This is the reason Kennedy probably got killed. He meant well, but that was the end of it with some people in this country. And I'm not defending what happened to Kennedy, but now I know more than I used to. They were gonna start the disarmament of our military and the Soviet Union under the UN. Folks saw it was a UN globalist takeover. The UN was created by the Rockefellers, and Texas is the reason the president's dead. To quote a certain rock band with Len Danzig. You can read the short title, Purpose, Public Law 87-297 for yourself and see what's passed in a law to disarm the American people, bring in the United Nations, and disarm our military and police as well. That's U.S. law. That's at thomas.loc.gov right now for you and your family. So they could argue they already put it into law to disarm you, the military, and the police. And when Kennedy signed that, he committed treason. Everybody else knows what happened to him at that point. Here's the civilian inmate labor camp program. This is declassified over a decade ago. Army.mil to put you into forced labor camps. So they say you've committed a crime at federal work camps.